What is creative financing? And is it something you can use when you're buying or selling a home? I'm Holly McCann, local realtor in Orange County, and I am just the right person to talk to you about this because I have used and offered a lot of creative financing in my purchase and sale of over 250 homes for myself and my husband. And then also I have helped other people buy and sell homes in the order of about 200. Not as many with the creative financing option, a few. But when it comes to me and my husband, we've done a lot. So I get asked about this and I wanna share with you guys today 12 types of creative financing. What is creative financing? It's anything that is outside the norm or not using a conventional loan when you are purchasing a home. So the first one you may have heard of is called seller carry or seller financing. Recently, my husband and I used this type of financing to purchase a home in Newport Beach. The sale price was 2.6 million. We put 600 cash down and the seller is carrying $2 million. That means he's acting as the bank for us. We are making monthly payments to him of interest only and we got a great interest rate. We probably paid um, significantly more for the house because of that. Um, if we didn't have seller financing, we probably could have negotiated a lower price, but it was worth it to us um, to have this well-priced financing come along with the deal. We've also made other purchases with this, and we've even offered homes a few times um, to buyers with this. All it means is there's not a Wells Fargo or Chase or some big bank holding the mortgage. It's all done legally through an escrow company with title insurance. So for instance, on my Newport Beach one, um, all went through escrow and title. The realtor still got paid, but instead of me sending a check or having auto pay to Wells Fargo, it goes to Mr. Seller and he just gets those checks every month and he's happy. He didn't need to be completely paid off he didn't, um, he owned the property free and clear. So it worked out really well. Um, the second one I'm going to tell you about is what's called subject to an existing loan or mortgage. This, let, let me give you like a little example. So say there's this house on Apple street and it's got a mortgage for a hundred thousand dollars on it. And Mr. Owner wants to sell it and say that interest rate that he's got is at 3%. And, um, I really want that as a buyer. I'm like, oh, I would love to be able to take, kind of take over that mortgage versus get a new mortgage, which today would be at about 7%. And so I say, okay, Mr. Seller, I'll pay you, you know, 120,000 for your house. I'll give you 20,000 for the difference between um, the sale price and the mortgage amount. So he gets his equity amount. And then I'm just going to start making payments on that mortgage he has for 100,000 at 3%. I have done this before too. It's very convenient, especially when it's a reverse mortgage. Now a reverse mortgage, um, when someone has one of those and they pass away, this is, I've used this a couple of times on flips that we've purchased. The mortgage doesn't need to be paid off within 12 months. So you can't do it too long. But the nice thing about them is they typically have zero payments. So if you are looking to invest in a house to fix and flip, that is a great one to go for because you, it eliminates that carrying costs um, and you just pay it off when you're done and ready to sell the house. So subject to means you are paying the existing mortgage and that can still be done through legally through an escrow company and that's what we have done in the past too. The third one is called an all-inclusive trust deed, AITD or a wrap, as in you're wrapping something around something. So that means say Mr. Seller, has that house that's worth 120,000 with a hundred thousand dollar mortgage, he would keep that in place. But then maybe I didn't want to put any money down. He'd give me a new mortgage for 120,000. So his mortgage in place, and then he has a new mortgage with me for a higher amount and he's charging me and then he's paying his mortgage. I know it gets a little confusing. You can definitely dive into more research and more depth on any of these, but I'm just giving you a quick overview of these. The fourth one is a cash out refinance where a mortgage gets a reset and you start back at um, zero. So I shouldn't say start at zero, start the clock back at zero and you start your whole entire um, 
clock for your amortization over. So one way to get money is you just do that um, cash out refinance on another property, cash out, use that to go do whatever else you want to do. The fifth one is a home equity line of credit. You can get up to 90% of your home's value, depending on the lender, out. Um, say you had zero debt, you could borrow up to 90%. Say you had a 60% mortgage, you could borrow another 30% of the home's value. Take that home equity line of credit funds and use that to go purchase your next property, make a down payment, buy a property with cash. You can do any of those. Number six, a personal loan. You can find these on the internet. If you just Google personal loan, you can get loans that are not even secured by anything. And depending on your credit history and credit score, you may be surprised. I get solicitations all the time. Would you like $30,000? Would you like $50,000? So that's a way that you can find money to do your real estate investing as well. Number seven, lease option or an, or an option. There's both options and lease options. An option just means you have the right to purchase a property at a determined price. Um, my husband used this when he purchased some land and it took a long time to get the land developed for him to be able to flip it to a builder. And during that time he needed extensions. And with the extensions, he kept raising that option price. It ended up being a win-win. The sellers got um, a great price. We were able to eventually purchase and resell the land. So that's another creative one is a lease option or an option. That's really good for those hard to sell properties or unusual properties. Um, so if you're the seller, that's especially good to help you. Number eight, self-directed IRA account. Oh, I love this one. This is so great. Um, if you are a buyer and you want to buy real estate in your IRA, it grows tax-free. If it's a Roth IRA, you never pay tax on it again. If it's a traditional IRA, you will pay tax on the taxable portion later. But that is a great source. So we've flipped... Um, houses in our kids' college fund, which is similar to an IRA, a Coverdale Education Savings Account, or a CESA. We grew their account from 20000 to over 500000 now um, by flipping houses. You can only do one or two a year. You can't go crazy with that, but we've been employing that strategy 15 years. So money in retirement accounts, if you're not with, your, um, with the employer anymore, you can typically pull it out and put it rolled into a self-directed investing account to do those real estate investments. Number nine, hard money, which means asset-based loan. That's where the lender cares not so much about um, you and more about the asset. They will typically loan you 65 to 85% of the after repaired value of um, that home that you want to buy. So if there's a home for a million bucks, Maybe they'll loan you up to, you know, 700000 850000 if they're going to 85% um, to both purchase the home and renovate the home. They can usually act really quickly. My lender usually does it in seven days. The interest rates are a lot higher, though. Um, back when interest rates were down um, as low as 2 and 3%, I was paying 7%. Now that the traditional interest conventional interest rate is at seven percent i'm paying nine and a quarter percent so it didn't go up as much but that's another source um, you cannot use a hard money loan for a home you're going to live in it's only for investment properties number 10 private money this is a friend a family member a neighbor a co-worker um, somebody that wants to lend money to you to purchase real estate um, that's another great source and i've done that one too you just figure out what a fair interest rate is that both of you agree on, draw up your paperwork, and that's another great source for money. The last two, number 11, is crowdfunding. You can look at Feather My Nest, Hatch My Houses, or a couple of sources for that. And the very last one, cross collateral, leverage on another property you own. So maybe you own a house on Pear Street, and you want to buy a house on Apple Street, and for whatever reason, you can't get a mortgage on that one, you mortgage Pear Street to be able to purchase Apple Street. So that's what cross-collateral means. Not very common, but possible. So there you have it. There are your 12 creative financing opportunities, solutions. Just hit me up if you have any questions on them. Put your comments below. 
definitely reach out to me um, with a call if you want to learn more about them. They are great resources for you if you want to invest in real estate and you need to go outside the box. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.